Hello. Hello, wow, it looks like folks have been hanging out. And I have some new followers. Gentleman Gamer, welcome. Grazzy FM, welcome. Uh, and Chaz8591, uh, welcome. Those are all on Twitch within the last hour. Let's see. Hey, why are you not showing me on multi-stream? Hold on. <clears throat> Something's on the big screen. What am I seeing? Zephy says hello. Grazzy says hello. You're on YouTube, but you'll move here now. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, cool. Now I've got multi-stream working. Hello, Smitey Smite. And hello, Zephy. And hello, Mr. Steak. Um, hello, Mr. Multi. Hello, Esther. Uh, hello, um, Zephy, who is, it was, it looks like hopping between both chats. Uh, got the camera working. All I did was just restart my phone. That's, oh, no, it didn't. Never mind. Hold on. I haven't actually switched the camera yet. Okay, we're going to do a quick camera test. Bear with me. Uh, this is this one. We're going to just see how this looks. Okay, looks fine. Yeah, just needed a restart. Weird. Hello, Dominic D'Souza. Welcome. First stream. I recognize your name probably from um, from comments, but uh, welcome. Glad to have you here. Hello, Haley W slash W. No, Mr. Steak. I was, uh, no, Mr. Multi. I was uh, replying to a Twitch person. I was saying hello to a Twitch person, uh, but welcome, Mr. Multi. Welcome, Gianni. Welcome. Could I bother you to zoom in on the browser a little to make it a little more readable? Yeah, we can probably do that today. Hold on. Let me get the... Um Demi plane pulled up, uh, but I'm not going to show you all my login. Okay, I'm already logged in. That's good. All right. Yeah, we can we can probably make this a little more visible. Mm, let's do it this direction. And hopefully that is a little bit better. Oh, Smitey Smite, hello. Thank you so much. I did not realize it was you. Thank you. I really appreciate it for the uh, the Amazon packages, which just got a shout out Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday's video. Welcome, Shaggy Belays. Uh, oh, perfect timing. Uh, Anonym WLW. Perfect. Uh, welcome, Emerald. Uh, Ed 1997 asked what my favorite uh, sushi is. I don't really like sushi, which makes me very strange for a Californian. Um, and it was very difficult to work in the entertainment industry because people would be like, oh, let's all go out for sushi. And I'd be like, oh, 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 oh. I don't really like sushi. <laughs> but uh, I know I am uncommon in that respect. Uh Gianni, thank you so much. I appreciate it that you uh, that you like the demystified series. Um, Vaklav, welcome. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. I see a um, I can't remember what it's called the uh, the line over the e, and I'm hoping that I pronounced it correct. Yes, yeah, Effie, Cali is uh, California has a lot of sushi places. At, at least as soon, um, you know, at least like ten years ago or so. Well, I mean, fair enough, but, you know, yes, California rolls are named after California, but that doesn't mean anything. Like, French fries are named after France. Like, y you never know. Um, hello, Evil Kitty Rainstar. Cannibalizing my own prep video views. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is when I could go live. <laughs> That's a good point, though. Make sure you uh, open up the prep video that I made. Just have it running in another browser. On another device so it doesn't slow down this browser. Hello, the Maui. Hello. Okay. FAKGBF asks, how crazy do I think they'll make this character? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Ebel Kitty Rainstar, glad that you were in the Discord as well. Very happy to have you. 
Um, all right, let's go ahead and dive into the character creation process. Oh, Mr. Multi, thank you so much. I'm really glad the, the video is helpful. The videos are helpful, I should say. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I think I know which ancestry they know is the most popular. <laughs> okay. Generate from... Oh, you can do... Oh, I see. You can select pre-generated adventures. Okay. So these are the rules. Are these just all the rules? Off to the side? No, just the, the basics. Okay. All right, let's start with... What does it think we're starting with? I don't, this is like the wrong place to start. I, but then, then again, D&D Beyond does this too, right? It's like right at the beginning it goes, hey, what's your character name? And it's like a portrait. And it's like, I don't I don't know yet. I'm not there yet. Don't rush me. Um, oh, I see. This is labeled one is class as well. Oh, that's funky. All right, let's take a look at some of these. Class items, a romance novel or a letter never opened. Rally. At the beginning of a session, place a d6 on your character sheet with the lowest number facing up. When anyone in your party rolls with fear, turn the rally die to increase its value by one. When you increase the value, when you would increase the value above six, remove the die. Describe how you rally the party and give everyone who listens a 1d6 rally die. They can spend this die to roll it and add the result to any action roll. Um... Or a reaction roll or damage roll. If your rally die hasn't finished this countdown by the end of a session, distribute the current value shown on the die as hope amongst your party, splitting it any way you choose, and remove the die. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good support ability. Wardsmith is persuasive and powerful. Troubadour is used that uses music. Oh, sorry. Persuasive and powerful using clever wordplay. Troubadour uses music. Okay. Druid. Now, it looks like this is also where we kind of get the cleric equivalent. Um, maybe. A small bag of rocks and bones, or a strange pendant found in the dirt. <laughs> These are the class items? Okay. I mean, obviously you can come up with your own, but those don't really give me a ton of, like, it's not really fit in line with what I would imagine for a druid. Wild Touch. You can perform harmless, subtle effects that involve nature at will. Example, causing a flower to rapidly grow, summon a slight gust of wind, start a campfire, etc. Harmless and subtle are important words there. Because it's basically a cantrip. You also take the beast form sheet available on page here. Okay, not quite yet, but fair enough. Mark a stress to transform into a magical creature equal to your level or lower from the available options. You lose the use of your abilities, weapons, armor, and domain cards, but gain the features and trait bonuses of the creature. You can drop out of this form at any, any time. So there's no limit to how long you can be in this form. Interesting. And this is actually more like the D&D &D movie Druid, where it doesn't seem like there's any limit to how many times you can do it except for stress. That's interesting. Probably smart to include that. And then Warden of the Elements, play the Warden of the Elements if you want to embody the natural elements of nature. Warden of the Renewal, if you want to use powerful magic to heal your party members. We'll take a look at the subclasses if I can't decide on a class. But, you know, for now I just want to get the speed, get a sense of what we're looking at. A totem, or, uh, so the Guardian has a small totem from your mentor or a secret key. Ooh. Unstoppable. Once per long rest, you can become unstoppable. Your unstoppable die begins as a D4. Place it on your character sheet in the designated section of your class features, starting with the die's highest value facing up. While unstoppable, you gain resistance to physical damage. Okay, so this is our barbarian. Add an additional D6 to any damage rolls you make. Can spend stress to re-roll any single die you rolled. Ooh, that's cool. Anytime you would roll your damage die, reduce the unstoppable die value by 1. When you reduce the value below 1, where the scene ends... Remove it and drop out of Unstoppable. And level 3, upgrade your Unstoppable die to D6. At level 7, upgrade it to a D8. Interesting. So you can only... It only happens when you do damage... Four times. So it only works for four turns, basically. You know, 
equivalent to four turns. It'll be up to six turns at level three and seven, um, eight turns at level seven. Okay. That's still pretty good. Because if we think about it mechanically, you know, that is less time than you get in 5th edition, but combat is also supposed to move faster in a game where you have so much fewer hit points like this one. Uh, name will be taken. I am using uh, Demiplane. Demiplane has all of the stuff for Daggerheart virtually. Demiplane is actually created by the same folks who created D&D Beyond, um, at least some of them. Went off on their own to publish something that is not specific just to D&D. They support lots of different games. But it's equivalent to D&D Beyond for those games. Uh, hello, Baronessa. <clears throat> Francesco says one of the effects... Mo sorry, most of the effects in this game are either once per short long rest or powered pools. Yeah, that makes sense. Just a very different uh, economy here. Stalwart to take heavy blows and keep moving. Vengeance, you want to strike down enemies that hurt you or your allies. I think I did understand that this was the Barbarian when we went over these yesterday. I have to double check, but yeah. Ranger. Trophy from your first kill or a seemingly broken compass. So that one works a little better. Ooh, I like that this person has an artificial arm in the art. That's really cool. And the, the bard... Okay, so this is the bard, not the wizard. Um, we can't tell this in this image, but they are in a wheelchair in the full art, which is cool. Um, but this is a little bit better angle because it's so zoomed in. We can see it in this piece of art as well. That's cool. I like that. Ranger's focus. Spend hope and make an attack with your weapon. On a success, you temporarily have focus on the target along with doing damage from the attack. Strange phrase. That doesn't really flow well as a sentence, but fair enough. Um, while focused, you know precisely what direction they are in. All damage rolls you make against them add 1d6. On a missed attack you make against them, you may end Ranger's focus to reroll your duality dice and take the new result. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you get a reroll, but you have to end your focus. You may only hold Ranger's focus on one creature at a time. Okay. I'm, I wonder how powerful that is compared to the others. Obviously, I will have no way of knowing that until we do more playtesting. But um, Wayfinder, hunt your prey using deadly force, and companion if you want to form a deep bond with an animal ally. So, trinkets. The Maui, is death when you hit zero hit points or you go unconscious first? The way death works is that when you hit um, zero hit points you have three options. You can either go out in a blaze of glory where you have a critical success on something you're trying to do and then your character dies. You can go unconscious and gain a scar, which uh, reduces your hope value by one, I believe. Uh, like like your mass, your, your hope limit. Um, but you're able to stay in the game. You're just unconscious and then your friends will get you back on your feet. And then the third option is just to roll uh, randomly. If you roll uh, with hope, you're back on your feet. I think you heal a little bit as well. If you roll with fear, you die. So that's the real, like, leave it to chance option. So the appeal of that, and I went on this yesterday quite a lot. You'll definitely see it in a, uh, a future video where I'm going to cut down these VODs and talk about the video or talk about the game some more. What I like about their approach to death is they give you all the different ideal approaches to death. So at least in my opinion. These images are going to awake something in people. I just know it. All right, this is the rogue. Forgery tools or a grappling hook. Class features. Hide. When you move to a location where no enemies can see you, you are hidden. Uh, you are unable to be directly targeted by attacks and any rolls against you at disadvantage. Again, kind of a poor phrasing there, but I know they're working on that and it's not the biggest concern right now. As a rogue... When you are hidden, targets also can't see you. Even if they move into line of sight, you are no longer hidden after you move or attack. When you leave hidden to make an attack, the roll has advantage. Sneak attack, add a d8 to your damage roll. Uh, if you have advantage or, or you're in melee or an allies against your target. So it's exactly the same, just a different um, amount of damage for sneak attack. You may also spend any number of hope before the attack roll. And if it's successful, add a number of d8 equal to the hope spent. Oh, that's a cool mechanic. That's a good way to do that. Syndicate, if you want to know someone helpful everywhere you go, so that's more of the crime approach. And Nightwalker is use the cover of Shadow to navigate your environment, so that's much more the stealth version. Oh, it looks like we have a super chat. Uh, big fan. Uh, 
Bitter Mixon, thank you so much for the $10 Super Chat. Big fan. Also, really looking forward to all the homebrew potential that'll come from splicing other domains. Yeah, it's definitely going to be... Um, once once the game is finished, definitely going to be ripe for homebrew opportunities. Uh, that's going to be really exciting. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, the Maui, you point out that the healing may be a response to Jester's approach to only heal unconscious people. That is not specific to Jester. That is... That is a whole approach and mentality in D&D 5e because it doesn't really make sense to heal your friends until they're unconscious because that's when it has the biggest impact. This definitely takes a very different approach because being unconscious isn't fun, you know? No, you're right. Jester is a very good example of that. I won't deny that. Okay, the Seraph. This is more the, the cleric and paladin version, it looks like. A bundle of offerings or a sigil of your god. A bundle of offerings. That's just a strange way to put that. Or a sigil of your god, which I think is what most people will take. Prayer dice. That makes sense. That's a cool name. At the beginning of a session, roll a number of d4 equal to your spell cast trait and store them to the right. You can exhaust them at any time to use their value, reducing incoming damage, adding to a roll result, or exchanging... Ooh, pardon me, I have the hiccups. You can exhaust them at any time to use their value in reducing incoming damage, adding to a roll result, or exchanging for that many hope you may give to any player. That's cool. Clear these dice at the end of the session. Okay, roll a number of d4, equal to your spell cast trait. Okay, so probably two would be my guess. Um, let's store them to the right. It's also any time to use their value in reducing incoming damage. Interesting. So it's a little bit like the divination wizard, kind of, where you have these rolls set off to the side. Or exchanging for that many hope you may give to any player. Okay, so that's how we distribute hope in the game. I think, well, the bard distributes hope as well, which makes sense. That makes sense for both these classes, to be honest. Clear the dice at the end of a session. Sure, so spend them, spend them if you got them. Uh, Winged Sentinel, if you want to take Flight and Strike Hard from the Sky, or Divine Wielder, play the Divine Wielder if you want to dominate the battlefield with a legendary weapon. Okay, so this feels more like Thor or King Arthur to me, and this feels more like certain winged characters on Critical Role, like Pike or other, um, characters we will soon talk about in, um, in Demystified. Grazi says, by the way, Mike, not sure if you figured this out already. Uh, but the reason you can only use the ability to switch your cards at your vault in level 5 because you don't get enough cards to not fit your hand until then, so it's irrelevant. Yeah, I, I don't like that mechanic. I understand why it's that way. I just don't like that. <laughs> I think you should always have... Because otherwise it feels like we're just wasting the potential of a card game. Because this isn't like a board game where halfway through the game you get that ability. You know, this is... Uh, getting to level 5 could be three or four months down the road. So it just feels like a really strange time to finally get that um, ability unlocked. Uh, Ruinous Paths, it is a demiplane. Demiplane is the name of the website. Uh, Sorcerer, okay. A Whispering Orb or a Family Heirloom. Cool, I like both of those. Good work. <laughs> I feel like that's the only one we've liked both of them for. Arcane Sense. You can sense the presence of magical people and objects when you're close to them. Okay. Interesting. So it's like a built-in detect magic. Minor Illusion. Make a spell cast roll. I'm assuming this is the DC. I'm assuming that's how they format that. On a success, you create a minor visual illusion no larger than yourself within close range that is convincing to anyone in far range or further. Okay. I know they're going for minimalism. Minor visual illusion... I think at least when you're coming from D&D, &D, clarifying that is really important. And I know there's a lot more freedom in this game, so I don't know whether that's going to be an issue here. Grazi FM, you're still confused on my opinion. My opinion is, um, no, I want. I think you should... I, I don't know what the solve is. This, is. this is really important, actually. This is really important. My job is not to solve this game. 
and I know that that's a kind of an unusual approach because we are all game designers in some way when we're running our games. But what I try to hold true is something that Brandon Sanderson talks about a lot. When you're taking criticism, it is very important to understand where people are having problems. It's not that important to listen to their solutions. You know, we can offer them all the solutions we want. If they don't want to do something with their game or if they've already tried it in playtest, it's not useful to them. What's more important is for them to see where the issues are. So that's why I'm really more focusing on. My feeling is that for the first four levels, if you're not using a vault mechanic, there's really no point in these being cards instead of just things that you write on your character sheet. Because they're all pretty short. They're all pretty basic. So why is this a card game until level five? You know, the point of spell cards in D&D, which are a third-party product anyway, which they don't assume you're going to use but offer if you want to, is there are so many cards. How are you going to keep this all straight? How are you going to have something else in front of you? I don't really get that sense right now with this game. So right now I'm like, okay, you want to do a card game. That has always been part of this design ever since we first heard about it, and I'm still seeing the same thing that I was always worried about, which is have you justified this being a card game? I'm still not quite seeing it. I like the cards. It doesn't have to be a card game yet. <laughs> it's just a way to it's just a way to help track the mechanics. But then why are we getting cards? Is is where I'm at right now. So I see that my you know, um, it seems like halfway through that speech you understood what I was going for. But it it helps me to sort of talk through, um, you know, the source of the issue I'm struggling with. Yeah, Grazzy, like I said, I, I'm. I'm repeating myself at this point, but you you already understood me. Um, but it's just helpful for me to talk it through. So, uh, Warrior, the Blade and Bone. The drawing of a lover or a sharpening stone? Again, I kind of feel like sharpening stone should be just sort of basic equipment. Um, I mean, I get not everyone has it. I don't know. I just don't quite feel like all of these items are from the same list, if that makes any sense. You know, like these are more like trinkets and these are more like stuff you would get as part of your class equipment in D&D, which is fine. Like they don't have to follow the same approach for, um, right, Tyler, if it's no different than having multiple choices in a book, then like, why are they cards? You know, like we don't really need cards for warlock invocations, you know, because we accept, oh, you just choose one and you move on. But, um... Uh, Danilo, that's re that's a funny question because I, I don't know the answer. I think that is something that is reasonable to ask, which is, um, which is that your, um, you're, you're asking the right question, which is, is this going to be shorter campaigns than we get in something like D&D? Probably. But I think it's very interesting that this game, Daggerheart, or sorry, Daggerheart, Shadow Dark, the MC Dam RPG, possibly others are definitely also all going for 10 level games instead of 20. And I think, well, I know one of the reasons that the MC the MRPGs talked about is that people don't play up to 20 levels of D&D. &D. You know, if you aim for fewer levels, there's more of a chance they're all going to cover those levels. Tyla, I mean, maybe, maybe it's only, they're just showing us the first 10, but I think, I think they're going to stick with 10 personally. Um, because quite frankly, um, they would they they would be very re weird to not give us all the materials you need. Um, Sponge asks if I missed reading the one feature at early levels that interacts with the vault. That's I I, I know people have have wondered about this but i i'm just also going off of how matt has described it uh somebody in uh ebel kitty rainstar i don't think they're going to convert it to roll 20 until the game is actually finished so i would i would imagine no someone uh it wasn't about the dice or it wasn't about the cards something else i talked about in the channel somebody in the oh it was also about the cards it was um it was being able to change them out. And someone was like, well, no, you can change them out. And I was like, that is not what Matt Mercer said in the video. I didn't reply to them. So, like, it's tough. Like, here's the thing is, if if it's true and I have actually missed something in here, that really needs to be presented better, you know? Um, but given that every reference I've seen is that you can only use the vault until, level, like, when you reach level five is... Uh... Okay, so, yeah, so there are specific examples, like the sorcerer. Okay, 
that's good to know. Again, I, I wish I wish more people could do more with it. You know, is 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 my is my feedback. They may say no, that's not our thing. I'll be like, okay, fine. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, where was the also? I saw Mister Steak say you didn't think many of the trinkets inspired much. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you're referring to the trinkets in Five E, which I think is is certainly true, or here. And I think that's probably kind of true here as well. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, Tyler. It, it makes perfect sense for them to do a card game. It's a really fun idea. Uh, MH, I don't believe you can change them out per long rest. I believe, I think you can, you just have what you have, um, is my understanding. Yeah, Zephy, exactly. I think uh, a lot of designers are looking at games like D&D and Pathfinder and seeing how no one really plays past level 11 and saying, well, why are we doing this? Why are we spending any time playtesting higher levels that people don't play? With the exception of one-shots. So. Francesco, I hope so. I hope that they test um, being able to swap out your cards a little more. Yeah, Faded, I had such high hopes for the 5e trinkets, and they just... Everyone stopped using... Well, especially people stopped using them after D&D Beyond became a thing. But even before then, I think... I, I have a video coming up about trinkets because I feel like... I feel like they're not going to make it <laughs> to the new edition of the game. And it's a shame, but it's also kind of interesting to show what version of the game they thought they were making in 2024 or in 2014. But again, that's a topic for a future video. Matt Thorne, the class items feel out of place on this page, in my opinion. It's That's kind of what it is. It's kind of like what are we doing with these? It's kind of strange that this is the first thing we see is a good point as well. Um, okay, let's return Let's return to uh, the character creation process because I probably got to stop in about an hour and a half. Um, yeah, exactly. He wanted to swap out one of his cards and Matt said that's not a thing. Yeah, that is kind of the thing that I'm like not loving as well. Is like if we can't exchange these cards or do anything with them really, then why are you using cards? Which I, but I've already gone into that enough for today. <laughs> um, battle strategist. Whenever you're making a roll to physically hinder a creature that isn't a weapon attack, like a shove, trip, grapple, etc., you could spend a hope to have advantage. On a success, you can choose to deal 1d8 physical damage to the target. That's interesting. Okay. So you're going to make a lot more wrestlers with this game. Uh, com or with this uh, uh, subclass, I guess you should say. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is just the class features. This is not the subclass yet. Oh, Interesting. Huh. Okay, so it's much more about maneuverability and uh, positioning. Okay, interesting. Combat training. Ignore burden when equipping weapons, and you may place primary weapons in your secondary weapon slot. Always add additional physical damage equal to the value of your level when you attack. Okay, so you're always really good... So you're good at basically, oh, I think I saw something about this in the Nerdy Nightly playtest as well. You can kind of dual wield larger weapons um, or, well, primary weapons. But I think those are generally considered to be not offhand weapons, if my if I understand correctly. That's pretty good. Interesting. Oh, you know what? Let me plug in my headphones so you don't hear my Discord notifications. There we go. Is there anything here that I needed to uh, worry about? <laughs> nope cool all right um subclass options as a warrior choose between the following subclasses call of the slayer play a call of the slayer if you want to ensure you strike down enemies with great power okay this is just more damage probably or harder attacks call of the brave if you want to be adept at taking both harrowing tasks and dangerous enemies okay i don't really know what that means <laughs> Like, that's kind of not evocative enough to tell us what we're imagining. Okay, interesting. Um, that's kind of the problem I'm seeing. Is I, I know they have a reason why these are different, right? Why the Warrior and the Guardian aren't the same thing. I don't see that on this page when I'm choosing my class and subclass. I guess I can scroll down and see, which I have to now. Um, so what is the... When you fail a roll with fear, you gain a hope. Um, oh, yeah, 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 this one. 
uh, once per long rest before you attempt something incredibly dangerous or face off against a foe who clearly outmatches you. Describe what ritual you perform or preparation you make to clear two stress and gain two hope. That's really good. That's really good. But I wish there was more here <laughs> to tell me that that's, to give me any sort of sense of what the, you know, this is kind of the thing I talk about all the time on the channel. What's the core fantasy here? Like, what is the difference between the Guardian and the Warrior just design-wise? Like, what are they kind of going for? This one seems like it's more about using multiple types of weapons, and this one, I guess, is about just taking a lot more damage. Which is fine, because this, this is our Barbarian, and this is our Fighter. That's really what they're telling me. Um, I think I would switch those names, to be honest. Well, no, I get, I get with Guardian, because you're taking the damage so other people don't. Fair enough. Yeah, it's just I just wish this was more evocative, I think, ultimately. All right, let's talk about the wizard. A book you're trying to translate or a tiny and harmless elemental pet. That's fun. I kind of like that. Um, that kind of already tells us the fact that we have elemental. Kind of tells us a lot about what their approach to wizards are going to be, is my guess. Precipitation, you can perform harmless, subtle magical effects at will. Changing an object's color, creating a smell, lighting a candle, floating something small, eliminating a room, repairing a small object. Okay, so that's a good number of examples. I like that. More than we got with the druid. Choose a number between 1 and 12. Anytime you roll that number on a duality die, gain a hope or clear a stress, you may change this number on any long rest. Ooh, that's really interesting. Huh. It's a cool mechanic, and, I, and they've called it strange patterns. Pardon me. They've called it strange patterns... So the idea is that you are, why is this a wizard power specifically? It's cool. I really like it. I don't quite see what makes it wizardly other than the name. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my reaction to it. I don't know why this is a wizard ability. What about this is wizardly? You know, it's not like, it's not like, you know, consulting your spell book or that sort of thing. Interesting. School of Knowledge. Play the School of Knowledge if you want to have incredible knowledge of the magical world around you. School of War. Play the School of War if you want to be trained to use magic as a means of violence. Okay. Um. So this is more... You just know more stuff, and this is more... You're a better... This is more war magic. Okay. Okay. Um... I don't have anything quite jumping out at me right now. I mean, I like the sorcerer. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so this is what we were talking about earlier. Place a domain card from your loadout into your vault and choose to either gain hope equal to the level of the card or add magic damage equal to twice the level of the card to the spell you've successfully cast. Interesting. Okay, so, th so there is one feature that I've seen so far that interacts with the vault before level five. Perfect fan, would just suggest learning D and D, Pathfinder, or Daggerheart for a TTRPG newbie. That is going to be a question that's better able to be answered once this game is actually done. Right now, I think that this game—it's tough for me to answer that because I'm. Oh wow, I've seen a. Whoa, I was way scrolled up. Whoa, when did that happen? Uh, okay, are you, are you noticing the difference in not having a pop filter? I took it off because it feels like it was obstructing too much. Uh, let me know what people actually, um, think of that. Uh, Nathan M, um, uh, you, yes, there are, each individual card has more spells on it. It has like two or three, I believe. What was the question I was answering? Uh, would I suggest using D&D &D first, Pathfinder first, or Daggerheart? Right now, D&D, &D, but... I think that's mainly because I don't think that this is done yet. If the sacrificed card has a recall cost of zero, isn't that infinite hope at will? Um, that depends on how long does this stay in your vault. Right? Can you recall cards from your vaults? I don't know that yet. That's a good question. Yeah, Esther, I'm, I I definitely feel the same way about, like, with the domains. And that's why I wish somebody mentioned that there was a chart of the different domains and how they interact. 
and which ones they fall into. Do we know where that would be? I know that there was one in Bob World Builder's video, but that was from an older version of the game. If I select domain. Okay, perfect. That's what I was looking for. Um, this is by Lazy Henry on the Critical Role subreddit. And this is five days ago, so this is the current version. So this gives me a better sense of, like, Sage connects to Ranger and Druid. Okay, makes sense. Arcana is Druid and Sorcerer. Okay. Interesting that Arcana isn't relating to the Wizard. But instead, the Sorcerer has more in common with the Rogue through the Midnight feature. Okay. The Bard and the Wizard share the Codex. Makes sense. Bard and Rogue share Grace. Okay. Wizard and Seraph share Splendor. Interesting. Seraph and Guardian share Valor. Guardian and Warrior share Blade, obviously. Bone is Warrior and Ranger. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. All right, what am I leaning toward? The Seraph does sound fun, actually. Rogue. I'm not a big rogue guy. I haven't seen anything here that really changes my opinion on it. I think they're fine. I just not... Not really how I tend to play. The Tyler does not look like there is a Dagger Hearts Reddit yet. Uh, Discord thread in my Discord. Okay. Um. Let's see where that is. I've not been. Keeping up with the threads. No, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Suggested discussions? No. Do I just need to search Daggerheart? <laughs> I can't find things on my own server. That's a, such, a, such a bad sign. Because <laughs> I don't... I have not been keeping up with it. <laughs> Daggerheart versus Candela. Okay. That's not it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Daggerheart. Okay. Where was it? It was under tabletop games. Why was it not showing that there was a thread there? Weird. Okay. Um, this is... Okay. So, Equi posted this. Let me... Open this up. Oops, I can't. Hold on. I have to save image. Yes, I see. Okay. I'm gonna make that a little smaller so it fits on the screen. Okay. All right, let's let's see. The guardian does sound fun. The druid leaning towards the seraph or the guardian. Let's start with the guardian. Let's start with something more basic. We'll see. I may end up creating another character. All right, choose a subclass. You take physical damage. Uh, when you take this foundation, raise all of your damage thresholds by plus two. When you take physical damage, you may spend a hope instead of marking an armor slot to reduce the damage to your armor score. Okay. When you take this foundation, gain an additional armor slot immediately. When you're hit by an enemy in melee range and use an armor slot to reduce the damage, immediately do damage to them equal to your armor value. That sounds fun. Let's do that one. That sounds really good, actually. A third party is absolutely going to fill up that chart. Yes, absolutely. Uh, suggested traits. Agility, strength, finesse, instinct, presence, knowledge. Uh, no, I, I want to place them myself. So obviously we'll go strength there. Hmm. 
Yeah, you know what? I'm good with that. I can... Or do I want my presence in... You know what? Before I decide on that... Yeah, now I'm on like step seven. Let me look at my heritage first. A heritage and community, because that'll help me determine. So let me actually uh, turn off suggested traits, and we'll come back to that. Yeah, Eric, they'll absolutely make their own, um, their their own versions of these as well, for sure. Okay. Okay, so we're making a guardian. Let's also take a look at some of these ancestries. Okay, Clank are sentient mechanical beings built from such materials as metal, wood, stone, and clay to resemble humanoids, animals, and even inanimate objects. That's fun. That's interesting. Decide who you were created for and by what purpose. When you generate your experiences at character creation, choose one that reflects this purpose and add a plus one to it. Oh, that's cool. Damon. Those of Damon ancestry are the humanoid descendants of the fallen gods who possess sharp canines, pointed ears, and horns that come in a variety of styles. When you roll with fear, you may choose to mark a stress instead of the GM gaining fear. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. Okay. Dread Visage. You have advantage on rolls to intimidate other non-Damon creatures. That's a good candidate. I like that one. I like both of those so far. These are, I mean, these are all cool. Dracana rep... D Dracana res I can't talk. Dracana resemble wingless dragons in humanoid form and possess a powerful elemental breath. Uh, and this just works like an elemental breath. Spend a hope to make an instinct roll. Okay. So if it was instinct, we would need a higher instinct roll. Okay. Dwarf. Dwarves are most easily recognized as short humanoids with square features, dense musculature, and thick hair. When you should take physical damage, you may spend three hope to only take half the damage instead. That's really good as well for a guardian. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Elf. Elves are typically tall humanoids with pointed ears and acutely attuned senses. Yeah, MH, the daemon is their tiefling, for sure. During a long rest as one of your actions, you may choose to drop into a celestial trance. When you do, drop a number of d8 equal to the stress you have marked and clear all stress. If any of these dice have a matching value, clear all hit points. So it basically gives you a, an opportunity to do two of the things you do on a long rest, potentially as one action. Fairy. They're insect-like people. Mark stress to take flight until you next roll with fear. While flying, your evasion score increases by two. I don't know if we want another way to mark stress. <laughs> um, once per session. Oh, what did I? It's eh, good to know. After you or an ally in close range make an action roll, you can mark stress. Yeah, those are both about marking stress. We have enough of that going on. Give the GM one fear to headbutt an enemy you move into melee with. The enemy immediately takes 1d8 direct physical damage and can't be targeted by this attack during the fight. Hmm. Okay. Furbolg. <laughs> Whenever you should mark a stress, roll a d6. On a, d on a 6, you take no stress. First of all, really funny that this is their version of the Furbolg because it really matches with the mood of both of the Furbolgs from Campaign 2, who were very laissez-faire. But also, this is really good. A 1d6 chance, or a 1 in 6 chance of not taking stress on a class that takes a lot of stress. It's really good. Right, because isn't that kind of how the Guardian works? Uh, or at least the subclass is... Oh, I'm sorry, you mark an armor slot. Oh. I was misremembering that. Okay. What is What am I thinking of? The class. I don't know why I was picturing this. Okay, never mind. I had, I had something mixed up in my head. I've been talking about this as gaining stress, and I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, you're right. All three of the Furbolgs from Campaign 2. That's right. I, f I forgot, but you are correct. Okay. So that's the Furbolg. Still really good. To speak with other Fungril across distance to access their hive mind of information, make an instinct roll. A character creation, describe what ritual you most perform to tap into this connection. Okay, so you'd want a higher instinct for that one. 
Galapa. The shell on your back always protects you. Add your proficiency to your armor score. That does sound really good. It doesn't change the number of armor slots you have, but it does add to your score. That is really good. Any melee weapon you wield has its range increased to, increased to very close. I know that's what um, Sam had. He was a giant guardian. Gain one additional hit point slot at character creation. Okay. I mean, obviously, that's, that would be good for a guardian. Danger sense. Once per short rest, you may mark a stress to make the GM reroll an attack roll. If it still hits you, reduce the incoming value by your proficiency. That's fun. I like that. Little lucky. Give everyone in your party a hope. You may always reroll the one on your hope die if you do take the new rules result instead. I like that the hairy feet are back for the halfling. That's fun. Human. When you fail a roll that utilizes one of your experiences, you may spend a hope to reroll. You may take the new result. Okay. On any agility rolls, you may mark a stress to reroll your hope die if you do take the new result instead. Okay, so it's it's pretty similar to the halfling, but but less um, easily done. Interesting. Orc. When you should mark an armor slot, roll a d6. This, this is what I was looking for. When you may roll, when you should mark an armor slot, roll a d6. On a five higher, you don't mark the armor slot, but still reduce the incoming damage by your armor score. That's really good for the one I was choosing. Okay, that's going to be a top contender. Ribbit. You can breathe and move underwater just as easily as land, and you can use your long, powerful tongue to grab onto things close to you. You may mark stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that deals 1d12 physical damage. And last one is Simia. Take advantage on agility rolls that involve balancing and climbing and add a plus one to your evasion. Yeah, we're going to go with the orc. That's a really good combination right now. Choose a community. You have advantage on any rolls you make while consorting with nobles, negotiating prices, or leveraging your reputation. Take an extra handful of gold at character creation. Loreborn. An advantage on any rolls that you make that deal with the history, culture, or politics of a prominent person or place. Orderborn. Record three sayings or values that your upbringing instilled in you. Once per short rest, when you describe how you're embodying one of those principles through your current action, you may roll with a d20 as your hope die instead of a d12. Whoa, that's really cool. That's a really cool ability. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. I have to think about that. You have advantage on traversing dangerous cliffs and ledges, navigating harsh environments. You have plus one to your armor score. Okay. Once per session, when you take a short or long rest, you may take one additional downtime action. Okay. Slyborn, you have advantage on any rolls while you're negotiating with criminals, detecting lies, or finding a safe place to hide. Underborn, when you're in an area with low light or heavy shadow, you have advantage on rolls to hide, investigate, or perceive details. And Wanderborn, add a nomadic pack to your inventory. Once per session, you may spend a hope to reach into this pack and pull out a common item that is useful in this situation and work with the gym to figure out what this item is. That's fun. And Wildborn, your movement is naturally silent. Gives you advantage on attack rolls you make to move without being heard. Spend a hope to also grant this ability to an ally while the they stay very close range of you. Okay. I mean, y'all heard how excited I was about the order born. <laughs> That's really good. That's a fun power. So I'm going to take it. Order born dedications. Ooh, I have to come back to that. That's really good though. Uh, set my traits. Okay. I think we're going to, because of that, we are going to stick with presence, right? Because I believe, charm, perform, deceive, recall, analyze, comprehend, intimidative, intimidative foe, plead your case. Yeah, I'll stick with presence. Okay, starting weapons. I like the suggestions, though. I like that they have these options. Um, let's 
Let's see. Is there some sort of... One primary weapon and one secondary weapon, then equip them if you wish. If a, you choose a primary weapon that requires both hands, you won't be able to equip your secondary weapon at the same time. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, I probably am just going to go with... What's the great axe? Or the battle axe. Okay, so there's no penalty. It's just a d10 plus 2 for me. Whereas the great sword takes one agility away. Roll an extra damage die and drop the lowest. That's kind of good. But agility affects armor, doesn't it? And with the... <sighs> With the Guardian, that does seem like a, a big cost. Very close instead of melee. Yeah, I mean, for now, we'll just stick with the Battle Axe. Sure. Um, and what is a... Two starting weapons. I'm not going to get a shield, because that doesn't make any sense. One hand. No, these are primary weapons. How do you only see secondary weapons? Is there not a way to do that? I guess not. Agility doesn't affect armor? Doesn't affect your armor class? Oh, it's, it's your evasion score. That's right, that's right. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. Secondary weapon, primary weapon. It's right there in front of me. Uh, okay, so this is the grappler. You may pull someone into melee with you. That's pretty good. there was a way to sort so you're only seeing the secondary weapons but it does not look like there is the grappler is really good is there anything worth taking over that short sword not in this case no yeah let's take the um the grappler that's awesome get over here uh tyla i don't know that's a good question Maybe we'll make a spellcaster after this. Probably not, but maybe. Um, suggested chainmail armor. Armor score seven. Minus one to evasion. Okay. Full plate, minus two to evasion, and minus one to agility. But armor class of nine, which is pretty good. Um, how does my thing work again? You use an armor slot to reduce the damage immediately do damage to them equal to my armor value but is that the same as my armor score what's the value right now i'm assuming that's nine if i were to take this that's really good i think i'm going to take that one starting inventory well uh what's the stamina potion do clear for 1d4 stress I feel like I'm going to spend stress more than I'm going to spend hit points, so let's do that one. Either a totem from my mentor or a secret key. Let's do the mentor, because we're from the Order Born. That makes sense. Uh, do I need a shield? I don't think I can use a shield since I have a uh, two-handed weapon. I could use a shield if I hadn't taken the, um, if I hadn't taken the great sword or the great axe. Whichever one I took. Either one, I couldn't use a shield with that. Okay, domain deck cards. Let's see. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. Domain deck cards. Okay, this is the this is the this is the meat of it. I can choose two of these, I believe. Right? I believe at level two. Look at all the level one cards from two domains and return choose two to begin the game, returning the rest of their respective decks. Yeah, okay. 
they've already said that in the future, every card will have its own art. They just don't have that yet, which is totally fair. While this card is in your loadout, if you choose not to wear armor, that doesn't apply. Forceful push. When you make a for successful melee attack, you can push the target out of melee range and spend hope to make them temporarily vulnerable. Not as useful to me as it would be for the th the war um for the warrior. Raid? Someone raiding me? I am your shield. When an ally is very close to you is going to take damage, you may mark a stress to stand in its way and take the damage instead. Reduce the damage by a value equal to your strength trait. You may also reduce the damage by spending armor slots. That's pretty good. Who raided me? Who, who, who hopped over? This is on Twitch, I believe. Ooh, when you roll your damage dice, you may reroll any ones or twos. That's pretty good. Thank you, Schmelz... Schmel... frosh. Thank you. Uh, when you take damage from a creature in melee range, you mark a stress to immediately deal weapon damage up to the... damage to the creature at half proficiency wound it up. Interesting. So I could just keep doing that with both my... So what is the subclass? This is the value of having cards, obviously, which I don't have right now. I don't... But this is just constant. Oh, but it's it's using an armor slot. Hmm. Okay. I'm leaning. I'm not going to do those top two. So, you mark a stress to stand in its way. I do like that. I'm going to take that one. And I'm debating. When you make a successful attack using a weapon with melee or very close range, you may spend a hope to use that roll against every other enemy in that weapon's range. Additional enemies you succeed against with this ability to take half damage, round it up. Pretty good. When you take damage from a creature in melee range, you may mark a stress to immediately deal weapon damage to the creature at half proficiency. Okay. This is really good. I think I'm going to go with this one. It may be basic, but I like it. Um, okay. Experiences. Okay, let's do, let's start with clothes that are. Um, <laughs> did I did I get the name right eventually? Okay, clothes that are. Okay, what is this character? He's a orc. Um, orderborn. He's an orderborn orc guardian. Eyes like okay, body that's thick. The color of grass on the other side of the fence. An attitude like Hmm, how do I want to describe him? I'm picturing him very soft spoken. It's a character I'm thinking of, but I cannot come up with. I do like a character. I'm actually gonna write that down. Yeah. <laughs> body that's thick um eyes like marble Uh, soft-spoken big stick, buddy, you made orc Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, listen, a little. <laughs> uh, clothes that are. Yeah, what do I, I like weathered. I like. I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna go with padded, or tactical, or loose. I kind of like. Um, 
Yeah, I like weathered. We'll stick with that. I'm sort of picturing him looking a little bit like... It's like a, like a bit like an old fryer, except he's got full plate, so... I don't really think you can see his clothes. Who from your community did you fail to protect, and why do you still think of them? My mentor. Web. Ooh, actually, I think there's something interesting I can do with here. Web. Um, let's see. How do I want to phrase this? Taught me everything I know and every act I take and oath I speak, I do so in his memory. You've recently been tasked with protecting something important with the goal of delivering it somewhere dangerous. What is it and where does it need to go? A tiger eye necklace, which belonged to Hmm. Lord. Orphan. No, that sounds like orphan. Or theater. When delivered, it will grant me access to a library of my order's ancient secrets. You've always felt uncomfortable in your own skin. What are you self-conscious of? Um, my towering height and voluminous girth. I'm going to say enormous. He's big. He's fat. He's cool. Um... I think I'm going to change his stats, his traits. I'm going to switch so the presence is instead, what was it before? Agility? I'll stick agility in still. Instead of presence, it's going to go to knowledge. And then for the minus one, we're still going to go with finesse. It still works. Generate experiences. It says three. That's interesting. Um, I do not walk this path alone. And... Um, Hmm. I want something that sort of represents his 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 order. So something like um oh, brother of the order of the emerald eye. Create connections, it doesn't really apply because we're not in a group, which is a bummer because I do like this feature a lot, but we can't really do it in this version of character creation. Okay. I do not walk this path alone and brother of the Order of the Emerald Eye. So this is sort of meant to represent his his religious um, or his religious order, his religious faith, and whereas this 
is more rep- meant to represent, you know, yes, his monastic way of life, but also the fact that he's working with other people and protecting them. I like that. I think that's fun. Um, okay, Orderborn Dedications. Record three sayings or values your, your upbringing instilled in you. You are not an individual. You are a part of a whole. We need not see the entire body to serve it well. The Emerald Eye watches for corruption and hmm what's another way to put that like what's another potential <laughs> um the, uh, the emerald eye watches for avarice and sin Even an the emerald eye must blink, but we must be vigilant to not lose track of what we have seen. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I think that's everything except for a name and an appearance. We'll use this one for now. Oh, actually, or is this a little better? No, we'll use this one for now as our portrait. Pronouns, he, him. That's not how that, that's not how that word's spelled. Character name, let's call him. Let's change our, our what was our friend's name, our mentor? Not web. Something like that. Hmm. Oh, how about Echo? And his name is... Envy? What's a... I, I like the idea of everyone having an E name, just because I'm weird. Maybe because I've been listening to Worlds Beyond Number and the characters in the Wizard Academy all have a S name. And Emerald Eye is already alliterative. What is a good... Let's see. Let's see what we get. Hmm. Ooh, ooh. Sentinel? Guard lookout. What could be reminiscent? Hawk. Oh, Eagle. His name is Eagle. I like it. Oh, people got ads. Oh, I forgot to hit record on this. I'll have to download the, the live stream. His name is Eagle. Eagle of the Emerald Eye. That's eh, a little on the nose. What about... Hmm. Words that start with E. When in doubt, just go look at a list. Eagle early. Well, he's not bad. Earache. These are getting long. There are not that many other words that start with an E. Eager, no. I kind of like early. No, you know what? We're going to name him Echo. And we're going to rename his mentor early. This approach might completely fall apart if I can't come up with other <laughs> other names that start with E. But you know what? My GM. That would be on my GM to do. Echo. I like Echo. That's a good name. Okay. 
Save changes. Let's make one more character. This should go a lot faster because we didn't have... Uh, we won't have to go through the entire process of listing off all of these things again. Let's create a Seraph this time. And specifically, we're not going to create somebody who is from the Order. Oh, I forgot to... Ah, uh, well. I, I forgot to actually check the things that I wrote for the Emerald Eye for Echo. Like, what was the what was your lesson, his lessons? I get to roll a d20 if I follow them. I'd have to look at that again. <laughs> oh, well. It's fine. Uh, okay. For class, this time we are going to go with Seraph. Oh, that's true. I can make connections this time now. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, okay. Choose a subclass. I'm going to go Divine Wielder. Set my traits. What's it suggesting? Oh, strength. Oh, well, yes, because this is Divine Wielder. Yeah, foundation is strength for both of these. Oh, interesting. All right, well, fair, fair enough. I'm making two strength characters then. Um, we'll come back to this. Right now, I like it. We'll see. I might change my mind. Let's choose a heritage. Clank could be fun. Clank could be really fun. Okay, what's the uh, Seraph do again? Roll the number of d4 equal to your spellcast traits. Store them to the right. Exhaust them at any time to use their value in reducing incoming damage. Adding to a roll result or exchanging them any hope you may give to any player. Clear these dice at the end of a session. And the subclass is... Oops, wrong one. When you have a melee weapon equipped, it can fly from your hand to strike an enemy and return to you. Mark a stress to also apply this attack to another target in range on the same attack roll. You may touch a creature and heal two hit points or two stress. Once per long rest. Okay, fair enough. Mark a stress to also apply this attack to another target in range. So what if I went with the Furbolg for this one? Because it's a 1d6 chance of not taking stress. I'm just going to look at the others. Look, here's the other thing that I'm wrestling with. Am I even... Uh, no, I'll talk about that in a minute. Because I don't think this character is going to take long to create either. We might make a third. Okay. Plus one to another one of your experiences. That's pretty good. Fear. I don't really... Uh, mark a stress. Okay. I mean, a Damon Seraph could be really cool. Decide who you were created for and for what purpose. Created by and for what purpose. That could be fun. That could be really fun. Um, I mean, any of these could work, right? And that's kind of the appeal. Shell in your back always protects you. That's really good, too. I, I wish... This is the thing that I wish I could do. I wish I could shuffle these. You know, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. Um... That didn't work. Roll a d20. One. It's a clank. I don't mind the clank. I think that would actually be a lot of fun. Let's do a clank. I can't really, really stream past four o'clock. So we're going to, we really are only going to make maybe one more after this, maybe. Um, Loreborn. Maybe. Beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, 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 be
High porn, you high porn robot. That could be interesting. Seaborn, Slyborn. Hmm. That would be one of the characters that I always make. Uh. Yeah, let's go with um. Loreborn. That makes sense. He was like an advisor robot. Okay, starting weapons. Why don't we do a let's do some dual weapon this time? Um, hallowed axe. Oh, I see. This is what it's suggesting already. That's kind of what I was picturing—a hallowed axe and a round shield. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's kind of what I was imagining. Choose your starting armor. A breastplate. Sure, I can stick with the breastplate. Why not? Minor health potion. Yeah, let's do one of those. Sigil to your god, definitely. Okay, this is the meat and the potatoes, all combined. Let's actually start the list here. Bare bones. Oh, I've seen these. If you don't wear armor, then your armor is three plus your plus double your strength. So it would be. Seven. What is it now? Five. Plus. Does that mean that I also couldn't take the shield? How does that work? Because right now my armor would be, what, six, right? How much does the shield give us? Plus two? Seven. It would be seven. Okay. So right now it is seven. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to worry about that one right now. Send a bolt of light toward them. Treat it like a ranged weapon dealing 1d8 magic damage that makes them glow brightly and become temporarily vulnerable. So that's Guiding Bolt. I'm going to Guiding Bolt him right up the butt. Forceful push. When you make a successful melee attack, you can push the target out of melee range and spend hope to make them temporarily vulnerable. Um, okay. I don't hate that. Especially with my ability to be a little bit more ranged. Interesting. That could be really interesting. That could be some really interesting combos. I am your shield. Um, I've already talked about that, I think. Mending touch. Spend two hope to heal a hit point or a stress. It's a lot of a spend, but we'll see. The two hope you spend heals two instead. Interesting. Reassurance. Yes, definitely take that one, which is just a reroll ability. You may offer assistance or words of support. Yeah, I like that for sure. And let's take forceful push, because that could be really interesting. I'd have to see how it actually plays, but it could work. Um, okay. Choose my description. Clothes that are. Not there. No, I'm kidding. Um, clothes that are whipping in the wind. Eyes like. Headlights, body that's rusty, the color, well, actually, yeah, the color of hmm. how do you spell it? Cobalt? No. Cobalt blue? Cobalt blue. Attitude like. <laughs> no. Um, what would their attitude be like? Clippy. I see that you're trying to take down a dragon. Can I help? That's a lot of fun. 
What god have I devoted myself to? What incredible feat did they perform in me for a moment in a moment of desperation has made me indebted to them? Um Am I making fresh cut grass? Oh well. <laughs> Listen, I forgot fresh cut glass was grass was a cleric. So uh it is what it is. The god of Hmm. Caster, the god of lies. I don't know why, that just seems really fun to me. Be like, hey, what if uh what if he serves an evil god? Not necessarily evil. Actually, the god of war. Let's do the god of war. Um, I helped protect my university by channeling his holy, his unholy fury. How did my appearance change after taking my oath? Um... My metal is always hot to the touch now. In what strange or unique way do I communicate with my god? Um, I can hear his whispers wherever blood has been spilt in anger. Would a curse on him just be a Trojan virus? Maybe. Generate experiences. Um, possessed. No. Um, agent of war. Oops. That's, that's too many. Um, and... assistant uh academic assistant that's fun we were not going to create connections right now what am i missing why does it not think i'm done three or four oh because i'm i'm a robot so i do have the extra bonus we'll just make them even fair enough um Okay, let's give him a name. No, I don't like the idea that just because they are a robot means that that's, that's the only non-binary character. That's not fun. Um, so we'll, we'll keep it he, him for now. This is the part that I would cut out of the video of me just sitting here going, hmm. Let's see. What is the term I'm looking for? Like, um, going to old thesaurus again. Curator. Yeah, perfect. Uh, or no, cataloger. No, we'll go with curator. I like it. Okay, save changes. We're going to make one more. One more character. And I'm doing this because, look, we all know what's going on. I'm making a character in Daggerheart. I got to make a ribbit. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. I'm, d I'm talking about Daggerheart on the internet. I got to make a ribbit character. Um, let's do the sorcerer. Which I know is what Ashley played, but I just I want to give the the magic a spin. Uh, 
subclass. Water, fire, air, lightning, and earth. Channel this element into unique harmless effects. May I spend a hope to describe how you control this element that helps a current action. Neither add plus two. Ooh, could I be a waterbender? That would be fun. Allows you to modify the essence of magic itself. Um, extend its reach by one range. Plus two to the da damage roll. Reroll any number of damage dice. Hit an additional target within range with the spell. That's really good. Do I want me to be a waterbender or just a really good spellcaster? Let's do the waterbender. Um, okay, what's it suggesting? Negative strength, finesse, instinct, presence. Okay, I'll stick with that for now. Let's see what we're going to do for our... Well, we'll do um. Seaborn. Because you get an extra downtime action and that's really good oh, we did my traits already okay starting weapons dual staff <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any like restrictions on most of these glowing rings very close instinct far Whoa, interesting. Agility, very close. Yeah, I mean, I guess if the... Oh, because it lets you cast your spells. Okay, sure, why not? Whatever. Um. Actually, what? there's a wand, right? Knowledge far. It could be knowledge instead, but I think it... I'm I'm for now I'm I don't know the system well enough to not just go with the basics. You know what I mean? Um Just a crossbow, maybe. Finesse far. Oh wait, that's a primary. I need the secondary version. Finesse far. Sure, we'll take the crossbow. Just so we have something. Froggy Swamp Vendor. Very good pull. Unkillable Mr. Steak. Yeah, that's true. Froggy Swamp style. Uh, breastplate, it's suggesting. We can do chain mail. I'm going to stick with the breastplate, I think. Because I figure this character is probably pretty light on their feet. Um, I'll stick with a health potion for now. Actually... Mm, I'll stick with stress. Not the end of the world. I don't know. Um, a family heirloom. Okay. Pick and pull. Advantage on any attempt to pick a non-magical lock, disarm a trap, or steal an item from an object. Okay. Reign of blades. Throwing blades that strike enemy enemies close to you, make a spell cast roll, and all targets you succeed against take 1d10 magic damage. If any targets you hit are currently vulnerable, they take 2d10. Okay. Rune Ward. Ooh. Deeply personal token or trinket that can be infused with protective magic and held as a ward by you or an ally. Describe what it is and, how, and why it's important to you. When the holder of the ward takes damage, they can spend hope to reduce it by a d8. If the ward die rolls an 8, the power will temporarily end after it reduces damage this turn. It can be recharged for free on your next rest. That's really good. It kind of fits with what I was thinking, which is something to do with this token. The family heirloom. You have a few minutes to prepare. You can mark stress to don the facade of any humanoid you can picture clearly in your mind. That's really cool. Doesn't quite match with what I'm thinking, but it's really good. You can make a spell cast roll against a target within far range and spend any number of tokens to channel raw energy from within yourself and unleash them against them. Well, a number of d10 equal to the tokens you spent to do that much magic damage to the target. Mark a stress to replenish this card with tokens up to your spell cast trait. pretty good or wall walk which makes sense you know this is a ribbit character so either of these would be really good it's a shame i can only choose one. Oh, but this is for any creature you touch no we'll, we'll stick with the spell cast we'll stick with this one unleash chaos i like that okay choose your description 
Ooh. Um, I kind of like flamboyant. Maybe they're like a pirate. Eyes that are like. Drops of amber. A body that's short and round. The color of? Mm, actually, should they even be short? I'm kind of picturing them a little bit more like a newt almost. So we'll go with lanky. The color of? Red and blue. An attitude like a pirate. Arr! Answer background check questions. What did you do that made the people of your community wary of you? I raided the seas for seven years. Who finally taught you how to control the magic bursting forth from you, and why are they no longer able to guide you? My pirate captain. Short shanks. Alas, he was mutinied against and made to walk the plank. You have a true fear you hide from everyone. What it is it what is it and why does it scare you? Water No. Um I fear that my only role in society is to sail along the edge of it and rob its people whenever I get the chance. Generate experience. Um. Scourge of the Seas and um, Trusted Confidant. That'll work. Um, hmm. And what would be a good name for them? Hold on. I want to look up a word. Is this offensive? Yep, it is. Okay, not going to use that one. I'm trying to think of, like, adjectives that are used to describe pirates. Like, what's a good one? Oh, salty. How about that? Salty. Well, now I'm just thinking of Salty Pete from those bonus games of critical role um salty sam because sam's a gender neutral name okay save changes and then what i'm gonna do is look at my characters and just for the sake of this exercise I'm going to see what happens when I go ahead and give them some connections with each other. Oh, whoa. This is the character sheet. I wanted to edit it. Um, okay. Well, this is cool. Details. Here we go. Connections. Okay. Details. Connections. Character sheet. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Salty Sam will turn to Echo and say, why do you trust me so deeply? And Echo will answer. Echo knows that we are always capable of doing great things no matter 
whether we know that about ourselves. Echo is going to turn to the curator or curator and say, how did I save your life the first time we met? Um, you stopped the administratum. Oh, yes. Um, Echo stopped the administratum from disassembling curator after he malfunctioned. Curator asks Salty Sam, what promise did you make me agree to? Should we die? Should you die on the battlefield? Um, don't you dare burn me ashes. Just toss me into the water and be done with me. Okay. And we have some connections between these uh these characters. This is cool. I like I like these characters. And if I end up playing one of them, I'll just delete the connections they have with each other. These are cool. I like this. I like what I'm seeing in the game so far. So the next step is to play some of it. I think I might be able to do that soon. We'll see. Oh, I can close this. Um I think I might be able to play it soon. Um Zephy, I would recommend watching Critical Role's videos. Now that I've created characters, I am going to watch their one-shot, which I haven't watched yet. Um, I want to watch Nerdy Knightley's one-shot. I've only watched the character creation for both of those one-shots so far. I'll watch Mega Megaphone Man's character creation stream. I haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the plan. Oh, I think... Yep, I'm a little bit behind on, on some chats. <laughs> Something Wellsian. I have broken your ability to uncritically watch the Merle Initiative. You know, now you're experiencing the the feeling that I get when I watch the Merle Initiative and have had that feeling for the past seven or eight years. Um, that's interesting too that they don't have that. They don't have any sort of initiative system because Matt's approach to initiative is so like iconic. They don't have anything like it in their game. That's really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Um, don't forget to equip my, uh, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Equip my equipment, which I do here. Good call. Um, can I only have equipment? So, oh, oh, I can't do this one at the, the dual staff at the same time. All right, folks, I think I am going to wrap things up. Um... I may I might stream tomorrow, but I probably will not. I think it is far more likely that I won't get a chance to stream again until Friday. Maybe Saturday. Um, I'm definitely going to be on Saturday um, for some Baldur's Gate. Maybe Friday. We'll see. Probably not. Um, let's see. Mark these. Cool. All right. Curator has the only uh, the only one with all of his stuff equipped. Um. All right. I will probably not see you all tomorrow. Probably will see you on maybe Friday. Almost certainly Saturday. Um. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a lovely um. Have a lovely time. Hope we're all enjoying our Daggerheart March. And um, I hope I get a chance to play it soon because I'm really looking forward to it. I will talk to you all later. See you then. Have a wonderful night and buying stuff.